You got um, to hear my knucklehead questions. Uh oh, what's your knucklehead question? No, I'm just saying. Oh, when when it comes when you when you get one. When it's time, right? Okay, so. Um, Wait. Anybody have any topics they want to get into tonight in this lovely Pro Tools world that we? I I do. If you you, I O setup again. Well, there's always that, but um, either, <laughs> either um, like, way, good way to like um, cross fades and just just fades in general and playlists in general. Fades and playlists. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna close this session, and so that's would be under the category of editing, which I think applies to everyone, no matter what kind of Pro Tools work you might be doing. Let's do Zoom. Um, what is it? Five. I don't have my watch on. It is the 12th, right? 512. All day. 2020. Four. Now you're creating a session right now, right? Yes, I am. And that's my question for the week is because later, later this week, I'm doing a project where I have to send them the session. Okay. And so if you come across that at any time, that's, that's like the, the main question on my thing. Okay. Well, so let's do that right now. That's a good, uh, a good place to start and we'll, and I'll come back to it. Okay. So um, I'm going to, if I launch pro tools, which I already have it open, but what will happen is it will open up. It should open up to the dashboard. And this is where you create brand new sessions or open recent sessions. I've got a whole long list here or projects. Projects are sessions that you, um, that are created in the cloud. So if you want to collaborate with somebody else, it's basically just a session that doesn't live on your drive locally. It lives in the, in the cloud of, you know, to share. So I want to create a session, local storage. I'll name it. I was going to call it zoom. So, um, one thing I try to do when naming sessions is, put some sort of information in the name so that if I come back to this three months from now or a year from now, I've got some sort of clue what it is rather than have an untitled one and untitled two. I have no idea what it is. I have to open it up to actually see it or hear it. So I will do a zoom session five, 12, 2020. And um, down below, File type, there's only two file types that Pro Tools supports natively, WAVE or AIFF. Either one is fine. Years ago, there was maybe an advantage one way or the other. Um, WAVE is, is the way to go. It's um, not going to create any problems if you select AIFF either. <laughs> right now, I'm using my built-in audio hardware of my Mac, so I do not have the option to select a sample rate, but 48K sample rate is a good standard. No one's going to complain about using 48K sample rate unless you're creating a session with somebody else and they make a, you know, they specify they want a different sample rate. 48K is a good place to be. Uh, same with 24 bit. I was, going to make a, I was going to make a quick comment about that. I noticed that with my Tascam field recorder, it records at 44. Only? So, yeah. Okay. Well, so you bring up a good point. He's got, uh, Reed's got a, a field recorder that he records audio at a sample rate of 44,100. If you wanted to bring that audio in without sample rate converting it, you could create a session at 44.1. If you created a session at a different sample rate, Pro Tools would allow you to import that in and it would convert it for you. Um, so once again, it's not an issue if you create a, a different sample rate. 24 bit, you've got three options. I'd say, I mean, uh, bit depth, 24 bit is a good place to, to be. Um, IO settings will default to last use. We're going to cover that topic in another um, session here. But anyway, so at the bottom is prompt for location. And this is important because where's this session that I'm creating right now? Where's it going to land on my system? By default, Pro Tools puts it in your documents folder. And it's, I think it's the same for a Mac or a PC. If you know where the documents folder is on a PC, I couldn't tell you, I'd have to fish it out. But on a Mac, you know, it's easily found, right? You go open up a folder and there's your documents folder. But I like to uh, specify where I'm going to put a session. So I'll choose prompt for location 
and it will pull up a folder or a drive locally on my system and I'll go to audio drive, Pro Tools sessions, where is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, up at the top, Pro Tools sessions. And then I've got it sorted by date modified. Let me go back to alphabetical. Zoom is at the bottom, Zoom sessions and my name that I typed in earlier is there. We'll hit save. Okay. And it brings me to my Pro Tools mix and edit window, the two main windows in Pro Tools. I'll create a couple of tracks here. I'm going to create... Uh, Interestingly video. enough, I discovered I can set this to 48K. Yeah, there you go. I mean, 44 one's fine too. It's not an issue. I'm going to create four... Didn't mono. mean to interrupt. Oh, no problem four audio tracks Thank and you. Then hit save. So Renee, you bring up a good point. If someone wants you to record something and then give, have you give them the session, it's kind of important that you um, give them everything, right? So if I want to find the folder, when I create a brand new session, it creates a folder with the same name that I chose as the session. And within that folder, it creates a few different items. And if you want to find that, I can go out and look for it for the drive because I know where I put it. But on a Mac, there's an easy way. If you hold the command key and click on this title up here and go back to uh, Zoom sessions here, it'll open up the folder where this session lives. And here it is, Zoom session 512 2020. That is the session that I just created. By doing so, Pro Tools created that folder. And inside that folder are all of these elements that are automatically created for you by Pro Tools. This is the session document that you're going to launch the next time you want to open this session. It's already open, so I don't have to do it now. Any audio that I record in here will land in this audio files folder. It's empty. I haven't created or I haven't recorded any audio. Let's see if I can. I'm going to create a 1K tone here. There's my 1K tone. You guys hear that? Yep. All right. I got, I got audio um, routed properly, I think, now. With Reed's help, we figured it out. I'm going to put a master volume here so that I don't kill everybody with really loud volume. Oops, now I have to set the output correctly. Stereo. How about that? No, that's not it either. <laughs> there we go. Okay. You hear that volume control to you guys? Hopefully. Okay. So yeah. now, if I go back out to that folder, uh, I will see now in the audio files folder, there's the file that I just created. So if you're going to hand off an entire session, you want to make sure that you hand off this entire folder and all of its contents. Because if you hand off just this session, it will open up but all the audio files will be missing and they'll come up, you know, offline. And of course they'll have nothing to play. Okay. So you want to hand off the entire session, which includes the audio files folder and any audio that you've recorded in this session. Um, and also this session document, the session document is where all of your labor is, you know, you record an audio file, it lives over here. But if I spend any amount of time, which we all will, you know, editing this and tweaking it and crossfading it and doing all this stuff. That's where all of your effort and your time is tied up in this session document. The session document tells Pro Tools how many tracks, what audio files are associated with this session, where do they live in the timeline, what plugins you may have used, all of the things that you've done to, you know, manipulate that audio are stored in the session document. So you, you want to make sure you send that, of course. So anyway, does that help? Yes, very much. Okay. So um, I'm going to go back here. So Roger, you wanted to get into um, editing, some editing things, which is a good topic. So I'm, I've got my new routing situation here. I don't know if my input is going to allow me to, I got to be careful. I don't get feedback. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. So I'm going to find an audio clip since I can't record directly in. Um, let's see if I have one over here. I know I do. Oh, here we go. Sarah Mann 
to use her audio again. Hope she's okay with that. Okay, so I just dragged and dropped an audio clip in. That's a common question I get. How do I get audio into Pro Tools? Um, drag and drop. It's the easiest, right? So I had this uh, audio file on the desktop of my computer. Just drag it and drop it into the timeline. It will um, convert it if it's a different sample rate, and there it is. So this is a stereo um, audio file that I dragged in. It landed on um, two monos. I'm gonna get rid of half of it because it's basically the same thing. I'm gonna get rid of this 1K tone. And uh, I'm gonna name, what's, let's do the track that it sits on. How about that? Double click the track name, we'll name it Sarah VO. And I'm gonna I was also going to point out for anybody that for anybody that cares, you can import various stuff using the file menu. The file menu, you can, yes. Yeah. So file menu, import, import audio. audio That's so video, old school, video. though. Reed, come on. Uh, look at me. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> look at me. Okay. okay. So this Carry is yet on. another way to import audio or video. If you want to bring in video, you can do it this way as well. Okay. I used to, so, razor, I used to razor edit tape, so come on. Yeah, you're, so you're old school, legitimately. All right, so <laughs> I am going to hide all of the other tracks by clicking on the dot to the left of each track that I want to hide in the track list on the left side of my Pro Tools edit window. I want to get rid of audio one. I'm going to click on that dot. Audio three, audio four, and master fader. I'm going to get rid of that too because I have the floating um, master fader volume over here that I can get to. So um, first thing, this so this is a little bit of review, right? So I've got this audio clip and I want to, Roger, you, you wanted to uh, fades, cross fades, is that right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to use the smart tool to do it. I use the smart tool all the time. And we've talked about this before. Um, a lot of people find the smart tool to be um, a little bit cumbersome. Uh, and I would agree when you're trying to use it on a, a clip that's zoomed out, you're using a, you know, a very small visual on the screen. So I'm going to use the E key and I have enabled this A to Z button here, which enables a whole boatload of keyboard shortcuts. And uh, by hitting, by selecting the clip, I can click on it once with the grabber tool, hit the E key. It'll blow that clip up. The selection will fill the screen. It'll take the track height up to, I think jumbo I've got it set to. Now the um, smart tool or the multi-tool is quite effective. I can go to the end and trim up the front end using the trim tool. And by placing the cursor into, di into different locations within the screen, it will turn into different tools, right? This is review, I think. And I'll trim up the back end. And of course I would be listening to this. I don't know what I'm trimming, but let's. Push yourself further than ever before with live total body workouts. Can you guys hear that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, I'm going to trim this down because I think this is a recording of uh, multiple takes of this. So I'm going to push yourself further to than it. ever before with live total body workouts, world class instructors, and real time motivating metrics. Okay. Keep your body in motion without ever breaking your stride every single day. <laughs> every single day. So I asked Sarah to give me some audio that's got some issues and she did an excellent job. That's not her normal read. She's quite the professional. So I asked her to intentionally do this for me. So I got rid of the back end. I've got everything that I want to use in this spot, this commercial, but it obviously it, I need to tighten it up with, you know, timing and clean up some things, change the gain a little bit. So I'm going to use the smart tool. I'm going to hit the E key again to, to take it back out and hit the E key one more time now to resize on my new selection. And I'm going to trim up the front. I'm going to get out of grid mode. I want to be able to trim and make selections without constraint. 
and uh, I'm going to listen to the beginning. So uh, playback is going to start. Push yourself further than ever before. With live. Okay, I got a bunch of um, space I want to get rid of there. So I'm going to make a selection, delete, and move it forward. Now, another way I could have done that is by using shuffle mode. So if I undo that, I'm in slip mode right now. If I undo that, I make the selection that I want to get rid of, and I enable shuffle mode in the upper left corner. I hit delete. It will close the gap based on the selection time that I made. I'm going to do the same thing right here. I want to get rid of that mount. I want everything to the right of that selection to move forward. I'll hit delete on my keyboard, and we'll do the same here. And let's listen to from the top. Push yourself further than ever before. With live total body workouts, world-class instructors, and real-time motivating metrics, keep your body in motion without ever breaking your stride. So that last edit, it seems like it happens a little bit quickly, right? And real-time motivating metrics, keep your body in motion. It goes right into the next phrase. Uh, a little bit soon for my liking, so I'm going to zoom in on it. I'm going to use uh, R and T. I'm going to use the T key to zoom in, and I'm just going to trim out that one side of the edit. I'm in shuffle mode, so the space that I'm adding is going to be added. Everything to the right is going to be pushed out, so I've just added a little bit of space in there. Motivating metrics. Keep your body in motion. I'm going to put a little bit more. I'm motivating metrics. Keep your body in motion with... That sounds a little bit better. I'm just kind of motivating metrics. timing right now. Keep your body in motion without ever breaking your stride. Every single day. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that section with the breath. I'm going to make a selection there. I'm not going to make it tight all the way up to the waveform. I'm going to hold it back. Whoops, one more joining in. Okay, hit delete. While in shuffle mode, it closes the gap. Let's listen to it. Ever breaking your stride every single day i told her to put mouth noise in there she did <laughs> we're deleting that every single the mouth noise day every single day you know if you're recording voiceovers or whatever just the the, the noise of your mouth i'd said give me a file that's got no, issues no, that, that's not what i meant never mind oh, okay i missed it dried every single day every single day okay so that's a repeat i'm going to get rid of that okay so here's some of the things that i was using i'm using the smart tool if i want to select a clip i'm using the smart tool i'll put the cursor at the top half double click with the selector it will select the clip that i've double clicked within right if i want to select this clip or this one if i triple click Anywhere in that track, it will select everything on the track, which in this case is only what we have vis uh, visible here. One, two, three. All right, I'm going to zoom out and just make a, a copy here. I'm going to copy that piece, zoom out, give you a better example of that. If I paste this down here, come back over here and I zoom in. If I, and I don't know if there's anything down there or not farther down the track. I can easily find out if I triple click with the selector, it will select everything in the track. I hit the right arrow key, and it will take me to the right end of my selection. And there's the clip that I put down the timeline. Hit the left arrow key, it will take me back to the left end of this selection. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of this clip, make a selection, hit delete, triple click again, left arrow. Now I'm back to where those original clips are. So just some navigating things. Here's also another shortcut. You know, oftentimes you, you'll have, um, you know, the, the clips kind of hanging off the edge of the screen and you want to see what the rest of the selection is, or you just want to center everything without moving it in the timeline. You just want to scroll the timeline. Of course, you can do that with a mouse that has a wheel on it. Um, on a trackball, I have a trackball, so I can do a shift um, scroll or you can hold down all three modifiers, Control, Option, Command on a Mac. On a PC, I think it's Control, Alt, Windows, I believe. And click and drag in the rulers, and you can just move the ruler the whole timeline left or right. 
which is sometimes handy. You just want to center that so you can see it better. Okay, so um, crossfades. This actually sounds okay the way it is. Whoops. Push yourself further than ever before with live total body workouts, world-class instructors, and real-time motivating metrics. Live total body workouts. Okay, so let's make an edit that's that requires a crossfade, I guess. I'm going to copy these two pieces here. Uh, or let's just get rid of this right here. I'm going to do it right in the middle. Total body workouts, world-class instructors, and real-time. I want to go right and. I'm going to get rid of right at and. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to zoom in, make my selection, cover that edit, hit delete. I'm in shuffle mode, so the selection is going to be removed and everything to the right is going to be moved ahead. All right. Body workouts and real time motivation. Okay, so I can see there's a little bit of remnant like S on this word here and and here. So a crossfade is going to be necessary, I think. Body workouts and real time motivation. Yeah, it's a little bit close. Timing seems to be okay. I don't know. You could continue to manipulate that if you wanted to. So Again, I'm using the smart tool, which is all of your edit tools enabled up here. I'm going to put the cursor down in the lower right or lower left corner. Either way, I usually go to the right side and click and drag. And I can do a crossfade by just clicking and dragging. I can make it as long or as short as I want. Now, this is going to create a crossfade that's equal on either sides of the edit. I'm not sure that I want that here because I'm going to zoom in. I can see that I'm going to undo that. The edit on this side is very close to the word. I don't want to crossfade that follow up word very much, but I do want to crossfade this area. So rather than do an, an equal crossfade, see how I drag it out, it uses the edit point as the center and it increases equally on both sides. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do a crossfade that's a little bit different. I want it to be short on this side, but longer on this side. So I'm going to make a selection and I'm determining how long I want this crossfade to be by making that selection. And I'll go to edit fades, create, and this will allow me to tweak the crossfade type. Let's do that. Let's see what that sounds like. And real Whoops, let me zoom out, give you a little more roll on it. Total body workouts and real time. Well, that sounds okay. Total body workouts and real time motivating method. I don't know if you guys can hear that well or not, but that's pretty good. And you know, I, I got lucky and kind of made that fade work the first time. But if I didn't like that, I could come back in here. Here's the fade that I created. I can manipulate it quite easily. And again, I'm using the smart tool, the, the combination tool up here. I can adjust the length and I have to place the cursor in different areas of the clip to kind of get to the tool that I want. So here's the trim tool. I can shorten the length of the crossfade on the left side or on the right side. Or if I don't like the way the fade curve is, I can grab that. And again, I'm putting the cursor in a different location. I can tweak it this way if I want. You know, I'm, I'm adjusting the the cur the the uh, fade curve. I'll zoom back out. Let's listen to it. Body workouts and real time motivate. Actually, I like that better. Total body workouts and real time motivating metrics. I don't know if you guys can hear that good. So that's a um, a cross fade. Um, if I wanted to do a fade out, let's say I'm going to go right to the beginning here. Push yourself further. Push yourself. Okay, so there's another issue right there. There's a little bit of a poof, a P puff hitting kind of hard there. Push yourself. I'm going to trim it up. Let's see if I can cross fade or fade in right over that, that plosive P that I might be able to tame it down a little bit. Push yourself further than ever. Try that. Push yourself further. Than yeah, that's almost too much. So a fade in on the beginning of that will will kind of tame that that plosive P. Push yourself further. 
push yourself further than. And again, if I want to adjust the, the, the fade type or, you know, curve, I'd zoom in on it, put the smart tool on the fade line and just tweak it to where I want. I don't want to totally kill it all together, but I do want to get some of it. And you'll see the waveform will actually adjust so you can kind of see how you're impacting the waveform as you, as you tweak the fade or as you change the, the fade length. So in this case, I'm changing the fade length, fade in length, or in this case, if I trim over here, I'm, I'm changing the whole clip, clip length. 